Hello and welcome to the final coding video of Pizza Legends. We're going to wrap this project up by creating a title screen component for our game. You can use the title screen to start a new game with fresh player state or continue a previously saved game. The code links and the playlist for the entire series are all linked below, so be sure to check those out if you've missed anything so far. And while this is the last coding video for now, there may be more on the way. I'll touch on that at the end. Let's get started. So let's start this one out by adding two new files to our project. Perhaps the last two files will do, oh my gosh, at least for now. Uh, so first it's going to be title screen.js. And then we're going to have a matching style file, a CSS file for the title screen. So a new file, title screen.css. We'll pop over to index.html and just make sure both of these are included on the page. So title screen.js. And then in our style section, We'll do title screen.css. So let's go to title screen.js and start filling in the usual things we see. So it's a class called title screen. It's going to have a constructor, our usual friend, the init method, create element. We're going to be using one of those keyboard menus again. And so we'll do our get options method. This will return an array. And as usual, we'll need to clean up that keyboard menu. So we'll make our close method and then bring in some of our usual things like end and remove on the element that we'll create. And for creating that element, we can bring in our usual things uh, like creating that element type div and then adding a class name to it that matches our JavaScript class name. We'll use this class name for styling too. Uh, and the kind of the big hero of the title screen component is gonna be a big logo image. So we'll say this element dot inner HTML this is something we haven't seen too often. We're going to put an image tag in here. It's going to have a clear class name so we can style it. Its source is a logo PNG that's contained in the uh, download files for this whole project. So be sure to check that out. And of course, it has alt text saying the name of the game, Pizza Legends. Now, most of our components like this bring in an on complete callback. But just to shake things up with this one, we're going to use a slightly different pattern just to explore a different way of approaching this. So for our use case here, the title screen is only going to have one job. We're going to present up to two options. One is going to be start a new game, and the next one will be load a game if you have existing progress. Because of that, we're essentially just like asking a question and wanting an answer back. And so rather than have an explicit on complete callback, we're going to make the init method async and have it kind of return a promise. And then the answer to the question will resolve that promise. It's kind of similar to what we've seen in the overworld events and the battle events. When we make an instance of the title screen, it's going to allow that part of the code to be just a little bit cleaner. But honestly, I'm just trying to show you different ways to do things. So we won't need this on complete callback, uh, but this class is going to have a different dependency. And that's going to be that progress instance that the overworld creates. So we'll say this dot progress equals progress. This is going to allow us to basically power that load game option. Here we'll fill in this part. So our first option is going to be static. It's going to be new game description. Start a new pizza adventure. It's going to have a handler on it, of course. And we'll come back to this. We'll also come back to adding the uh, maybe have a continue option here. I say maybe because if we don't have a saved game, then we'll only be left with this one option. Let's do what we need to do to get this thing on screen now. So in this component, we're going to return a new promise. That's going to have a resolver that comes with it. Then we can do our usual stuff, like create element, append the element. We'll create our keyboard menu. Then we can initialize it, passing in the container we want to throw it into, which will just be this element. And then, of course, we'll set the options. So that'll be that this.getOptions method we created. But we're going to pass through the resolver for this promise so that when we choose an option, the handler can fire that resolver. So we'll pass through that and then accept it up here. And now we can call it. And then when we do call it right before that, we want to make sure that the title screen does its own cleanup. And so that's what that close method is for. That'll remove everything title related from the screen. 
let's create our instance of title screen now. And so that's going to happen in an overworld JS. Part of our initial kickoff here. So show the title screen. So we'll say this dot title screen is going to be a new title screen. Config wise, we need to give it a progress instance, and that'll be our this dot progress that's created right before this. And then we can await this dot title screen init. And then we'll pass through our element that we want to inject this into, which is the same one we're using down here. So I'm going to grab this, turn it into a variable. So we only do that DOM lookup once container, move it up here. And then we can use the same one right here. And now that we're using await, we need to make sure that the method we're using await inside is marked as async. So we'll come up to right here and say async in it. Now, whatever we get back from the title screen is really going to inform what happens here, whether we load some progress into the overworld boot up or not. But before we do that, let's just see what this looks like on screen. And here it is. Isn't it gorgeous? Basically, none of the overworld stuff is booted up yet because we're awaiting the results of the title screen. We don't have any styles for the title screen yet, so everything is just stacking and kind of um, plopped right here, I guess. Let's go ahead and fill in some of those styles for the title screen. So moving to title screen CSS, we want to take the whole title screen component and make it position absolute, hugging all sides of that game container, and then setting the background to just be solid black. For this, I'm going for kind of a classic NES title screen. I'm thinking specifically of like Mega Man 2 or the old Final Fantasy games, or it's really just the game's logo against a black screen and then really minimal options on how to boot up the game. But of course, obviously, make this look like whatever you want. I'll bring in some styles here for that logo image. We basically just want to center it on the screen, make sure it's a good width. This is two times the width of the image itself. And because we're upscaling it, we want to make sure that it's image rendering pixelated to be nice and crisp. Next, we're going to have some overrides for the keyboard menu that we're using. So remember, out of the box, keyboard menu comes with some opinions on being position absolute. So we could just kind of throw it anywhere on the screen. In this case, we want it to stack in flow with the logo. So we'll use position relative. We'll give it a width and center it. We'll get rid of the background that comes with it, because in this case, we want to opt out of it. And same with the border. We're also going to reset the button styles here to have white text center everything and just make sure that some of that default padding is removed. We also have that description box on screen and we want to give some similar overrides to that to match the aesthetic of this title screen. So we'll get rid of the background, white text, no borders, and of course center everything. So let's see these styles on screen. I'll reload the game and everything pops right into place. Now from here, we can move on to do the functionality of new game and then adding that continue game option if we have a saved game. But before we do that, we need to do something very important that I've been neglecting for many, many, many videos now, but it's finally going to get resolved here. We need to add a nicer font to this project. So let's come to index.html. I have picked out a Google font that I think fits the vibe of this game pretty well. So I'm going to load in some lines of code for that. Google Fonts gives you all of this stuff to include in your project, and I'll have a link to that in the description below. The font I've chosen is Ribeye. I don't have the greatest reason. I was just looking for something that could fit like a quirky Italian pizzeria kind of menu that you'd find on the table or something like that. Google Fonts also has a lot of pixel art fonts. If you want something that matches the pixel art aesthetic, I decided to embrace the quirkiness with this. But again, as always, make this look like whatever you want. Add a quick comment here that these are the overworld styles. Now to actually use the font that we're loading in, we can go to global.css, find our body rule here. And at the end of it, I'm going to add font family ribeye, and it'll default to a cursive system font. Again, channeling the fancy Italian menu thing. Now when I reload, our font is showing up and it's going to show up everywhere else in the game too. Now if I click new game, the title screen will go away and the overworld will actually start. So that part is pretty well set up. What we want to do, though, is make sure that we start the game wherever we want the game to start for a new game. We also want to make sure that player state starts all nice. Right now we have it started with like, you know, no health left and a bunch of XP. That doesn't make sense for the very beginning of the game. And so we'll fix that in a second. But first, I want to pause the game and save. 
we're going to start working on that continue game feature. And so I want to make sure that I have a save file ready to go for us. So I'll hit save. And now let's clean up the true start of the game. So back in code, let's go to progress.js and we'll start the game on the demo map. Let's go to player state. Really, we'd probably want to only start the game with one pizza. So I'll get rid of these. And our lineup can just be this one pizza, P1. We'll get rid of the status. Make sure HP starts full. And no XP. It's worth noting that we could start this empty. And like Pokemon style, if you wanted to force the character to choose their first pizza before anything happens, you could set up a cutscene that does that using that crafting menu event that we created. For us today, though, to keep things simple, we're just going to start with this one pizza. And now we need to undo something that we did in the previous video, where if we go to overworld.js, the init code is automatically using a save file if we have one. We don't want that behavior, though. We want this to come from the title screen. So here, I'm going to delete this line that sets save file. I'm going to rename this check to check for use save file. And this save file is going to come from the title screen here. And in title screen, the new game option is not sending anything with the resolver. So that would be undefined. So from the overworld perspective here, when we hit new game, this will be undefined. And so no save file will be loaded in. Let's make sure we use the correct map ID here. It should be demo room. On the title screen, I'll choose new game. And I'm loaded up in that demo room. I have good initial state here. Now I have that saved game that I saved before we implemented this. So let's add that second continue game option. In title screen JS, when we're creating this array of options, first I'm gonna check for a save file to see if it exists. So that can be done by our progress component. It has a method on it called get save file. This is either gonna be a JSON configuration object of our save file or nothing. And now here we can conditionally include a new option if the save file is present. And so we use a ternary here. If we have a save file, we'll include an object that has label continue game. And a handler on it. If we don't have a save file though, the other side of that ternary will just be null. And then at the end of the array here, we can tack on a filter and filter out any value that's not truthy. So if this is null, we'll get an array back of one that only has new game in it. If we do have a save file, we'll get two options. And now here we can take the same things that we do in the new game handler, bring them down to continue game, but we want to resolve the component with save file data. And so instead of nothing here, we're going to include our save file. Now in the overworld, when we use this title screen, we'll get that save file back here, and then the overworld will continue to load it and merge in that initial state. When I reload my title screen now, I have continue game as an option, and I can select this. My saved local storage data will be merged into the game state we should launch exactly where I saved before. And here we are in this map. My pizza state is exactly as it was before. I can still hit this new game option and launch the game with fresh state. And if I reload the game in an incognito tab where my local storage is not present, then I only have the new game option. I can save the game in here, reload, and now that continue game option shows up. So now, as content authors, we can build out the game to be whatever we want. All the storytelling can go in the maps. We can include all the battles we want, all of the abilities to craft new things, all of the pizza content. We can continue to play through the game and save as we go. At any time, you can leave, come back, and resume your progress with this continue game option. 
So before we close this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching not only this video, but the entire series to the end. My mantra for the project was to make sure that every single line of code was captured on video, and that made the series really long. So seriously, thank you for sticking with me through the whole thing. I really hope the series opened up some new ideas for you, and you'll be encouraged to start and finish your own game project. So what's next? For one thing, I'm going to have a closing recap video of all the different ways I think you could take this project and run with it, so be sure to subscribe for that. There's going to be a lot to cover there. I do plan to have some more supplementary videos on other features that could be added to this game, but to be honest, I backed off on a lot of those because the scope of the whole thing got so large. So while I want to create those videos, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do them yet or where I'm going to release them, so please hit me up on Discord. That's the best way to keep in touch on where we're at with this kind of thing. I'll also update the description box as I know more. Speaking of Discord, you should definitely join us in there if you haven't already. There's a bunch of really supportive people that want to see you succeed. So drop in there, tell us about your project. I want to hear about it. There's also a donation link below if you want to support the channel directly. Again, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.